Hi. Okay, now we're on chapter 2.4 in which we're going to talk about definitional techniques. And we've already seen two definitional techniques, um, intentional and extensional. Those are the two basic techniques, but now we're going to talk about different types of intentional definitions and different types of extensional definitions. Alright, so here are the extensional or denotative definitional techniques. They are um, demonstrative or ostensive, enumerative, and definition by subclass. All right, these three are extensional techniques, so let's look at them individually. The first type is a demonstrative, demonstrative or ostensive definition. That points out that which is being defined. So it actually, you demonstrate or you point to the thing that you're defining. Example, a lectern is this, as I point to a lectern. Now, I usually do this in the classroom, and I don't have a lectern in my apartment. Yet, yeah, anyway, I'm looking for a lectern and a whiteboard just to keep it home. Uh, in any case, if there were a lectern here and I said, this is a lectern, that would be demonstrative. A tilde is this, and you see a picture of a tilde. Or if I draw a picture of something and say, this is what a fish is, or something like that, that would also be uh, demonstrative. The next type of definition is enumerative. With enumerative, you're listing individual members of the class. Okay, you're not showing them, you're listing them. So, um, cat is an animal like Garfield, or Morris, or Heathcliff, right? Individual cats. An athlete is someone such as Alex Rodriguez, Tom Brady, or Venus Williams. Again, individual athletes. Next, we're going to look at definition by subclass. With subclass, rather than talking about individual examples, we're talking about types, or classes within the class. So, Cat is an animal such as a Manx, a Siamese cat, or a Persian cat. These are types of cats, not individual cats. Athlete, someone such as a baseball player, a runner, or a hockey player. Again, these are types of athletes. And so the difference between enumerative and subclass is enumerative lists individuals, subclass talks about types or classes within the class. Now let's look at some intentional or connotative techniques. They're synonymous, etymological, operational, and genus indifference. Synonymous. Synonymous, a synonym, right, is a word that means the same as another word. Um, here, the definiens is a single word that contains the same attributes as the definitum. Basically, we're defining one word with another. So, example, rich means wealthy. Canine dog, apothecary, pharmacist. We were defining one word with one word only. All right, synonymous. Etymological. Etymological definition is we're defining a word by uh, looking at the word's ancestry either in our language, well, its own language, or other languages. All right, we see this in dictionaries a lot, right, where they go back to the ancient Greek or Roman, or uh, Latin, I should say, um, roots. So, philosophy from the Greek word, uh, well, philo, which means love, and sophia, which means wisdom. And so philosophy literally means love of wisdom. Now, I know my head's in the way, but profane is from the Latin profanus, which means outside the temple, uh, something that is not sacred, uh, something that is irreverent or blasphemous. Okay, So, again, what we're doing is we're defining these words by looking at their roots in um, other languages, or sometimes even in our own. That's etymological. Now we've got operational. Operational, what we're going to do is we're going to suggest a test or an experimental procedure. And usually with operational, we get if and only if. Um, something belongs to this if and only if we apply this test and something happens. All right, examples. Someone is classified as a full student, full-time student, if and only if they're carrying 12 or more credit hours in a given semester. So again, full-time generally means they're doing it all the time. Um, it depends on what those 12 credit hours are in, obviously, whether they really are a full-time student. Uh, solution is basic, if and only if litmus paper turns blue when dipped into it. Obviously, it would have to be read first. Uh, so again, uh, this is an operational definition. To be basic is to have a certain chemical composition, so it's suggesting a test. Uh, genus and difference. Uh, genus and difference, what we're going to do is we're going to define a word by, as a species of a genus, and describe how that species is different from other species within that genus. Now, let me translate. 
What we're going to do is we're going to take a word and say, okay, it's part of this larger group. And then what distinguishes that word from other members of that larger group? So here's an application. A genus is a general class of things, cat. A species is a subclass within that genus, Manx. Okay, so Manx is what we're defining, and we're first going to say a Manx is a type of cat. Now that tells us a little bit about what a Manx is, but it doesn't tell us what differs a Manx from other types of cats. That's the difference. Okay, so the difference is what separates the species being defined from other species within the genus. All right, so a Manx is a type of cat that differs from other cats. Do you know how a Manx cat differs from other cats? I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. I'd be playing music in the background right now. Okay, so do you have an answer? Okay, a Manx, the species, is defined as a cat, a genus, which is genetically without a tail, which is the difference. Okay, so Manxes are actually cats that are born without a tail. Okay, and I say genetically without a tail because you cannot make a cat into a Manx. Okay, that would be wrong, it would be cruel, so don't do that. But if it's a, a type that is normally genetically without a tail, tail that's what a Manx cat is. All right. So again, genus and difference. A Manx is a cat genus uh, that is genetically without a tail difference. And that is genus and difference. And so now we've looked at uh, four different um, intentional techniques, which are synonymous, um, operational, uh, genus and difference, and etymological. And we looked at three different extensional techniques, which are um, uh, demonstrative or ostensive, subclass, and enumerative. And so uh, what we want to do is be able to take these and look at definitions and be able to determine what they are. All right. So hopefully this has helped in that endeavor.